Up next, we have Maher Upadhyay presenting Culture, a part of you you've yet to explore. Every November comes a holiday that I look forward to all year. Let me set the scene. I put on a dress that weighs more than me, filled with shiny, sparkly beads and laced with threads handmade from 7,000 miles away. My arms are decorated with bracelets, and my face is dotted with my mom's makeup. I see hundreds of relatives, family, and friends, it seems like the entire country shows up in my living room. I'm sure we all have a special day we remember, a habit we do often, a place we visit, whatever it is. For me, it's been the Volley, a festival filled with lights, happiness, music, and so much food that I look like a balloon by the end of it. I celebrate this holiday because my family isn't originally from the United States. And I know I'm not alone. There are probably people in this audience whose culture is nothing like it is here. While they're just as well, could, people in, be, could be people in this audience whose culture comes from right here in the town of Summit, New Jersey. But no matter who you are or where you're from, culture is in everyone, everywhere. And regardless of how insignificant you think your culture may be, these small aspects of your life can show you just how relevant it really is. To even begin to see culture in us, we have to understand what it is. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, culture is the characteristic features of everyday existence, such as diversions or way of life, shared by people in a place or time. In short, Culture is the way you live your life. So instead of thinking of culture as a straight line, I'd like you to imagine it as more of a sphere with no real sides and its traits left to the perception of the person looking at it. To show you just how contrasting culture can be, I'm going to use my parents as an example. Both are not from America. Instead, they're from India. My mom is from New Delhi and my dad is from Lucknow. Even though they both grew up in the exact same country, their lives were different. My maternal grandparents currently live in the same house my mom and uncle grew up in. Well, my dad's family in childhood moved around a lot. My dad likes sweets, while my mom favors salty food. Just like how your lives are different from your neighbors, or someone who lives in a different state, and more similar to people like your siblings. Sure, it's true, culture can differ between people. But when most think of culture, Religion is often our first thought. Now I'm gonna be honest, before I started this whole process, it was mine too. And you're not wrong. Religion does play a major role in impacting our culture. Whether you go to church every Sunday, pray at a temple, or even just believe that a bigger person is watching over you, it can influence your values and customs and play a major or minor role in influencing your culture. Religion inspires art pieces that showcase faith and belief, and music featuring diverse styles and instruments. It also impacts traditions and festivals, from Christmas to Passover, Hanukkah to Dia de los Muertos, and St. Patrick's Day to the Vali, a festival deeply rooted in Hinduism, something my parents and grandparents practice passionately. One of my closest friends and multiple families I know of celebrate Christmas, but they don't believe in Halloween. But is religion the only thing that contributes to our culture? The food we eat and the way in which we sit down for a meal is also an essential part of our culture. Take Thanksgiving, for example. For some, this may be a familiar scene. You enter your dining room and see your entire family packed into one space. The food on the table smells like heaven, with enough to feed a tiny village. And of course, there's football, whether you watch or play. And when it's finally time to dig into those mashed potatoes you've been eyeing for the entire day, you do it with the love of knowing that you're surrounded by family, 
friends, and even that one aunt you don't know the name of, but for some reason remembers how big you've grown. But for some, Thanksgiving can just be a normal holiday or day. They may even celebrate it with a soccer ball and pizza instead. Even though the perspectives of this culture differ between people, it is the dishes and the people you love that make this specific holiday so special. Thus, we know food binds us together, just like a team or community of people. Humans travel to many different places, with cuisines being blended from different countries around the world. According to the SLO Food Bank, food is considered part of an intangible cultural heritage, a way of life passed down from generation to generation. And research from various sources studying the diversity of foodways report that your cultural background does impact what you eat. For some, spicy food may seem like a burst of flavors, while others will stick to something more plain. Or pineapple on pizza, Ugh. a debate that started with the Hawaiians and has made its way around the world as either an amazing or awful creation. But I don't think I truly understood the meaning of cultured food until I traveled to India last summer. And it was like entering my parents' world, seeing their childhoods and lives from my perspective. And even though I eat Indian food here in America, the rich spices and flavors made from the hands of my grandparents somehow made it taste even better. As for being passed down for generations, these were the same foods my mom ate growing up, same as my grandma and her mother in the same house they had lived in. The same can be said about you. Think of a childhood sweet, a snack you pack in your lunchbox, or even turkey and mashed potatoes over the dinner table, and know these things are what can shape your palate the most. Just like food, culture is also something that grows and changes over time, giving you a chance to explore it for yourself. For me, and most of my family, it was Taekwondo, which was a recent part of my cultural experience. And that's how Grandmaster Yu's Summit Martial Arts kicked its way into my life. Get it? Kicked. Taekwondo. Anyway, my family and I signed up, and my brother loved it. And frankly, after a while, my mom and I did too. Taekwondo is not a sport normally advertised in the United States. Instead, its culture originates in South Korea. Master Yu and Mrs. Yu moved to the US from Korea and have been teaching Taekwondo as black belts since 2001. Not only is Master Yu part of the 0.05% of masters in the US and 1% of masters globally who teach Taekwondo at the level of an eighth degree black belt, but he also shared his skills and started Summit Martial Arts to coach people of all ages Taekwondo. As for me, it was so thrilling to kick so high and punch so hard. This is also how I met my masters. Masters are teachers in Taekwondo who aid you through the world of kicking, punching, disciplines, physical health, mental health, and much more. Over time, my family and I have gotten progressively closer to the sport and to the masters who have helped us, which was the goal of Master Yu and so many others who come to this country to share their culture. And as I continued, I realized that if not for his willingness to share the South Korean culture, me, my family, and many others would never have gotten to experience this life-changing sport. After this interview with Master Yu, I had an interesting thought. Both first and second generation immigrants can indeed have differences in their experiences and perspectives, but there are also similarities between the two. Both groups often face challenges in navigating and balancing their cultural heritage with American culture. As a second generation immigrant myself, helping me realize that both my American and Indian culture were part of me and not two opposing players on a team made me conclude that a so-called small part of your culture is actually what can shape it the most. 
you may not even think about it, but our cultural norms unconsciously affect how we interact with one another. Like the way we behave, which plays a major role in our daily life. My mom always says, how we act outside of our home is a big reflection of how we act in our home. That's why whenever we go somewhere, she ensures we're dressed appropriately and behave our best. Both cultural psychologists and social anthropologists agree that your cultural background does shape how you behave and socialize. For instance, in Japan, it's common for adults to work in one industry their entire lives. While in the US, people tend to switch jobs more frequently in pursuit of success. Similarly, in Brazil, greetings are usually warm, involving a hug or kiss on the cheek. While in the US, a simple handshake or hello is more common. Cultural norms are controlled by our environment. This is why culture is so important and different in so many of us. All these aspects of culture, from sports to food, religion to festivals and traditions to even something as simple as everyday life, play some role in impacting your culture. Especially in places like the US, where many people from different backgrounds are learn to appreciate their cultures through schools and work, giving future generations a way to feel that they're part of something bigger than themselves. So, when you step out of this auditorium, remember that no matter what, who, or where your culture is from, you should live knowing it's a part of what makes you special. If we all keep this in mind, we can create a world where culture, big or small, is not only accepted, but celebrated. Thank you.